Okay, so we are taking photons that are arriving from the air into our eye, and our eye is filled with water. Look at what happens when I look down into water at a bicycle. You can see that this is a very distorted view. The ripples on the surface of the, of the water uh, refract the light that's bouncing off this bicycle and give me a, a non, a, a, an inaccurate picture of the um, circularity of this wheel, for example. So the way to, to fix that and the way that we have fixed it is that we've matched the refractive, uh, there's a change in refractive index between eye uh, or between air and water. We have to match the refractive index of the incoming uh, visual information, the incoming photons. And that's done in a two-step process. First, there is a big refractive jump at the air to cornea uh, um, uh, interface. And then there's a smaller one uh, that involves the lens. And this is equivalent to if you've ever used a microscope, the you, you see nothing and you take the, the big wheel and you, you, fo you try to focus and get everything in focus, uh, that's the cornea. And then you're trying to just go up and down and, and, and find focus, that's the lens. All right, so um, what we're trying to do is get incoming information to come to exactly the right place in the retina. The retina is just this incredibly thin uh, layer at the back of the eye. But it's not just that it has to hit the retina, it has to hit the very back end of the retina where the photoreceptor outer segments are. And we'll look at that in detail. But what I'm telling you is that it has to get way back here. Specifically, we're talking, you could be off by 10 microns and it would make a difference. You could be off by 100 microns, it would make a big difference. So uh, we need photons coming from one location to be focused directly at this one spot, not in front of it and not behind it. And the major way that that occurs is through eye length. And so there's a process, uh, or there's a situation, uh, uh, well, there's a process called emetropization. Emetropization. This is emetropia and then adization on there. Emetropization is making the eye the correct length. And this is what every, every individual does during their initial years of uh, growth and development. And what you're making your eye the correct length for is for far vision. Now remember that far vision is anything beyond about seven meters, about 20, 21 feet. Uh, that, at that point, incoming information is coming in straight. The, the photons from, from far objects are coming in straight. And, they, uh, and that is what emetropization is for. So that at rest, when you're looking far, you will see uh, far objects, far objects, the light from far objects will be focused right on to the photoreceptor outer segments. Now, we still have to see near objects, and in order to do that, what we do is we change the refractive index of the eye. We can't change the eye length, that's a developmental fact. What we can change is the, um, is the refractive index using this fine focus uh, uh, a, um, this fine focus um, mechanism. But it, it's, a, it's a com accompanied by two other things, which are all part of the near triad. And remember that the near triad is completely subserved by the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. So the third cranial nerve is necessary and sufficient for the near triad. And what it includes is this lens accommodation, a rounding up the, of the eye that increases the uh, refractive index. It includes pupillary constriction through a smooth, um, an action on smooth muscle. This is a parasympathetic function coming out of the ciliary ganglion. And the point of pupillary constriction is that it, it um, changes the aperture. So it narrows the potential 
cone of blur. And finally, we converge. We converge our eyes. So if I'm looking out there, look, 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 and now I look at my finger and you see that my eyes have looked in. Medial rectus on both sides. I'm converging, instead of looking like this, I'm looking this way. I'm converging my eyes. And that also, that angle of, of the angle at which the light rays hit my cornea is also contributing to an increase in refractive uh, power. So these three things are going to enable us to see, um, uh, to see near objects and to have the, the light from the near objects focus directly onto uh, the, the correct spot in the retina. Now, what can go wrong with emetropization? And what can go wrong with eye length? Well, the first thing that can go wrong is that uh, it can grow too much. And that produces a situation where instead of uh, the light ray uh, photons reaching this exact spot here, they're, they're, they're focused here. So information is focused at, at some spot in the vitreous humor. And then the information is going to come and it's going to blur out. So converging information here will then blur out and hit two spots on the retina. And it, something that should look as though it's a point is going to look to be a blurry uh, uh, object, uh, a much larger object. So that's myopia. Myopia is a big problem. It is at epidemic uh, proportions in some parts of the world, including uh, Eastern Asia. Uh, there appears to be some genetic uh, susceptibility, but that is, there is also a huge environmental uh, component, and that environmental component, for a long time, people thought it might be um, looking far vision, that, that people that, that became myopic spent too much time in near vision. And that may play a role, but it's now coming to light that, that the uh, wavelengths of light that are, um, that are experienced during growth and development are very key. So in other words, you need natural wavelengths, you need the natural spectrum of, of sunlight rather than indoor lighting. So get your kids out, get them outside, have them play outside. Um, this is not just, myopia, of course, is, is nearsightedness. It means that you can, you can see near, but you, can, you have um, much less acuity seeing far. Uh, that's why I wear glasses. My glasses correct for my myopia. And glasses, in general, can correct for, for most cases of myopia. But it doesn't end with whether you can see, whether you can be corrected or not. The, consider that the, the eye is longer. So now the retina, which is going to be pretty much the same size, is stretched over a, a, a greater surface area. You are stretching that retina. And what that uh, increase, incre that stretching increases the risk that the r retina will detach from the eye. And retinal detachment is a big problem for reasons that we are going to explore in depth. So myopia is not a trivial problem, and it's not a problem that, that starts or ends at correction. It has these down, downstream, uh, uh, it involves downstream risks for other more serious visual problems. The other things that uh, can happen is that the eye can grow too short. That's hyperopia. That means that you're seeing uh, far, but you can't see, it, it's difficult to see near. And in that situation, when you're looking far, uh, uh, people that are hyperopic will tend to, um, they'll try to con increase their refractive power by converging their eyes. So they'll look slightly oddly cross-eyed or converged when they're looking far. Um, this can be a, a serious problem. It's much less common than is myopia, and it's not, it's certainly, um, uh, the, the causes of it are, are, are much less understood than the causes of myopia. Um, and finally, one of the most common problems is something called anisometropia. That's, that's very hard to say. 
Um, but this is when the two eyes are at different lengths, and that makes for uh, that. That's a uh, a big problem for uh, individuals to develop a uh, coherent view of the world. And we'll come back to that at the very end when we talk about how a, 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 a growing individual learns how to see and the challenges that, that this um, difference in, in the two eyes length presents for that. Eye length is very important. It's not exactly, uh, sen is, is, we're not talking about neurons here so much, uh, but it's critical to the neurobiology of seeing. And now we're gonna jump in to the nervous system. We're gonna look at photoreceptors.